During the night, the weather has changed. Rain and fog hide the high peaks above the Green Hotel, and the jet stream winds across the flanks of the mountains. Going up from here would only be miserable. We alter our plan to make this day of acclimatization a little easier. As the highest point between the Black and Caspian Seas, Elbrus is a weather magnet. Storms rushing across our side of the mountain could hang around for days, hindering our attempts to climb higher for acclimatization. We're hopeful that clear weather will be found in a valley to the west, where Russian engineering may also be able to assist us in gaining altitude. Riding on the roof? And check out our hotel. <laughs> this is hairball, huh? You know, everywhere else in the world it has two wires that the tram hangs off of, but this one looks like only one. I'm a bit Do you hear that? Yeah. It does not sound good. Oh, this thing's bomber. I wouldn't worry about it. Yep. Wasn't too bad. Wasn't too, too bad. These creeks are freaking me out. Yeah, these creeks are kind of freaking me out right now. This ride could represent the greatest risk of the entire trip. This antiquated Soviet convenience has proven, more than once, that technology can provide speed, but not always safety. That's where we are right now. Hey, Hilo. Oh, one more tram. So that's the chair. So we go all the way to 38, which is pretty cool. Pump. 1,500 meters, that's 5,000 vertical feet. We would have had to walk. But then we got another 5,000 vertical feet to walk after that. So it's all good. Looks good. I don't really know what this is. I think those are tea bars that are open in the winter. Gaining nearly a mile of altitude in a single day, we're certainly glad to have a way up other than walking. These lifts, once used to transport skiers up to the slopes, now deliver climbers to the jumping off point of the Elbrus Climb, a filthy and boot-scoured campsite called the Barrels. Okay, here we are at about 13,000 feet, right at the top of that uh, single chair lift. Um, this is what they call the Barrels. This is where most of the people hang out um, before they start to climb kind of like alpine huts, if you will. Um, we've decided not to stay here, A, because it's kind of divey, grubby, um, and B, we decided to hike a little further. Um, we're at 13,000 feet now. We're going to go up to at least 14,000, which will give us a little bit more acclimatization, as well as we'll be kind of on our own in our tents and have a little bit more of an alpine experience. First in any alpine experience is setting up camp. What amounts to a repetitive chore at this altitude will become the only protection against the elements in this high place. This camp is higher than nearly every summit in the lower 48 states back home, yet a mere stopping point on the way to the summit of Elbrus. We're already as high as some of us have ever been. We were just outside and watched the sunset, and it was the most intense pinks and purples and oranges and colors like I've never seen before. And uh, it was just setting over thousands of, of peaks out there. Like, it was just a sea of mountains poking up through these pink and purple clouds. And I've never experienced anything like that. It was the single greatest view of my whole life. And uh, I, it's just a feeling that I'm never going to forget. 